Okay, some basic ideas and concepts and beliefs around Hinduism. Hinduism is definitely one of the oldest religions uh, that is widely practiced today, probably the oldest one right up there with uh, Judaism. Uh, began in India um, and led to some of these other key religions here. Um, and we'll talk about Buddhism later in the unit. It is a philosophy, it's a way of life, it's a religion, and uh, as, as all religions go, um, it really helps people navigate their life and, and help frame and understand the world around them. And one unique aspect of, of Hinduism, however, is this, this idea of a caste system that we covered earlier in the unit, and you'll see how that uh, plays into Hinduism more here. There's no particular founder, um, there's no Moses or Noah or Abraham type of um, key figure to center on really. You can see here it's about four to six thousand years old depending on how you date it. Uh, the Vedas are the key scriptures along with the Upanishads that we read in the textbook. And with the large population of India, it is clearly the, the dominant religion of India and ranks third behind Christianity and Islam as the most practiced religions in the world. A few key things that Hindus believe. Um, their origin story, as all origin stories, I find interesting. Uh, this is kind of their explanation. Uh, this is their, you know, biblical genesis, so to speak. This idea that uh, the world always is and always will be. So that's all how they choose to explain it. They believe in this concept of, of fate uh, through uh, these four laws uh, that ties in with the caste system which will get explained here shortly. Here we have a few key terms that we want to be aware of because I'll be mentioning them as we as we move forward in the lesson here. First of all is the Atman, right? This eternal soul. And this is uh, every person, every plant, every animal has this particular eternal soul. And you want to get your soul out of this cycle of reincarnation. Um, that is called moksha. Okay. And when you achieve moksha, you align with Brahman, the supreme spirit, right? This universal uh, spirit called Brahman. Okay. And, you know, it can be debatable depending on different um, groups of Hindus as, as to whether they're polytheistic or monotheistic. Uh, they do, and we'll get to that later in the unit or uh, lesson as well, this idea that um, there are many gods, there are many manifestations of them, um, but there are a few that look at a monotheistic. But I think it's probably easier just to generally say that they're polytheistic. Four Hindu belief practices uh, kind of explained here. First of all, every Hindu has their dharma, and these are the, the requirements or the duties, um, code of laws or ethics that each one in their caste system is expected to follow. And we'll see that later in a graphic. Reincarnation is the cycle that they're trying to get out of, um, which, is, which is moksha. Uh, to liberate or free one's soul, it, your Atman. And then how you do that is, of course, by following your Dharma, and, which will, if you do, you're creating good karma, which is cause and effect, right? You, you reap what you sow. Um, if you do good things, good things will happen, and you'll, you'll reincarnate out of your particular place, whether you're a plant animal or wherever you are in the caste system. So, just to spell it out here, they believe in this concept of karma, that if your good conduct will help you uh, reincarnate up into the next life, keep moving through that samsara wheel. Reincarnation is the name or process of this cycle. Okay. Moksha is, or moksha is freeing your soul from the chain of rebirths. And Dharma is that 
code of behavior or ethics or laws for each social class. Okay, and they're and they're different depending on on which which caste you fall into, which we see here. Um, each one of these would have a different dharma. Okay, um, and again, you're going to want to go through samsara and reincarnation, have good karma, follow the dharma, have good karma, and keep cycling up until ultimately you get uh, out of the reincarnation samsara cycle. So one more time, here's just a review of these concepts for you. And just to emphasize here this idea that, you know, if you have bad karma because you practiced bad dharma, you can go down. And so there is a punishment. There is a, a, a carrot, if you will, to move up by practicing proper dharma and earning good karma. And there is a stick that if you don't, uh, you can go backwards, so to speak. So just to reiterate, we have the one universal spirit, which is Brahman. Your soul is the Atman. And let's look at their top gods here. The Brahma is your creator god. Vishnu, your preserver god. And Shiva. Shiva is the destroyer god. And as some students have mentioned, you know, you can find some of these showing up in popular video games and things. So these do end up, you know, becoming spread out across our, our different world's cultures, these different names and concepts. So there is this idea that um, Brahman is a bit of a three-in-one uh, Hindu trinity concept similar to the, the Christian uh, trinity. This is a neat slide uh, symbolizing uh, some Hindu concepts in the elephant. Always worth looking and reflecting on you know, where we can all make progress. Here we see some typical Hindu temple architecture. And again, not everyone follows uh, all of their religious laws, but many Hindus are in fact vegetarians and many carry this concept that, that all things should be respected, plants, animals, and people. Um, so again carries this idea of, of nonviolence in Hinduism. And that probably explains why cows are, are particularly important in Indian Hindu culture. And hopefully now you've got a good overview and grasp of the basic beliefs, vocabulary, and key elements of Hinduism. A general understanding of Hinduism helps all of us around the world better understand India's past as well as its present.